from iHeart Podcasts. These are the whistleblowers. I wasn't just going to sit silently by. Somebody needs to just give everybody the whole truth. You take your question in black self and get it on up out of my facility. If you speak out, you will pay. He should be prosecuted. When power corrupts, conscience is the last line of defense. I'm Miles Taylor. Listen to the whistleblowers every Thursday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, this is Laverne Cox. I'm an actress, producer, and host of The Laverne Cox Show. Do you like your tea with lemon or honey? History-making Broadway performer Alex Newell. When I sing, the Holy Ghost shows up. That's my ministry, and I know that well about me. That's the tea, honey. Whoever it is, you can bet we get into it. My guest and I, we go there every single time. I can't help it. Listen to The Laverne Cox Show on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Irish legend has it that way back in the 1500s, there was a ship captain who gave birth aboard her vessel. As she lay cradling her newborn son, chaos erupted on the boat. An enemy ship was attacking. The captain put down her baby and wrapped him in a blanket. She emerged from her quarters with the blunderbuss gun in hand. She was ready to lead her crew to victory. From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about folk heroes, women whose lives and stories took on mythic proportions. Today, our folk hero is a woman known as the Pirate Queen of Ireland. Let's talk about the life and legend of Grace O'Malley. Grace was born sometime around the year 1530. Her family was part of the Gaelic O'Malley clan, which controlled the western coast of Ireland. Her father was an O'Malley chieftain, and her family members were all skilled mariners. As an adult, Grace O'Malley became a powerful ship captain. She took to the waters on trade expeditions and war missions. She was best known as a pirate. Notably, she introduced a new type of piracy called toll-taking. Grace and her crew would sail in the bay off the western Irish coast. When they spotted a ship they didn't recognize, they would approach. Then, she would demand a toll for passing through waters that belonged to her clan. For those who were foolish enough to refuse, Grace would order her crew to plunder the ship. It was a busy trade route at the time, so her skills as a captain gained her considerable wealth and political power. English royal documents even described her as a notorious woman in all the coasts of Ireland. When Grace was in her 40s, she became known for a different type of rebellious action. Throughout Grace's life, Ireland faced down a reconquest from the English Tudor monarchy. And around the 1570s, the political environment grew more intense. The English installed their own military governors in Ireland and changed the laws. They also made an enemy in Grace O'Malley. She began rallying her power and leading rebellions. In response, the English undercut Grace's power and influence by seizing her land, cattle, and ships. Grace's wealth was reduced to pennies, and her eldest son was killed in a rebellion. Still, Grace proved to be fierce in her resistance. In English documents dating back to the 1500s, officials remarked on her defiance. They said it was Grace O'Malley who'd nursed every rebellion in her province for decades. In 1593, Grace's conflict with the invading government reached an all-time high. The English governor captured and imprisoned her youngest son. Grace was devastated. She knew that the English government was unlikely to bargain with her. She was a notorious pirate and rebel against the crown. And now, she would need to figure out a way to convince them to grant mercy on her son. The only place she could imagine finding an appeal was with the highest power in England. Grace sought out an audience with Queen Elizabeth I. Before Grace could see the queen, she needed to win over her court. Grace used her political tact and influence to make her case. She framed her piracy as a symptom of her poverty. It seemed she was trying to elicit some sympathy from the queen, and it must have worked. After months of petitioning and answering questions, Grace managed to arrange a meeting. The Irish pirate queen sat across from Queen Elizabeth I at Greenwich Castle in September 1593. Grace would do anything to save her son. 
And so she agreed to stop all of her rebellious activity against the crown in exchange for her son's freedom and the return of her lands. Grace must have made a compelling case. She was soon reunited with her son. But it's unclear if Grace ever received the land that was promised to her. It's thought that Grace O'Malley lived until the age of 73, dying sometime in 1603. She was buried at her family castle on Clare Island. After her death, Grace O'Malley was largely written out of history, but her legacy lived on in song, Irish folklore, and poetry. Today, many of the stories we know about her are based on actual events, but the details have probably been exaggerated, like the epic tale of her youngest son's birth during an enemy attack. Fact or myth, Grace's story captures a moment of Irish resistance and fierce leadership. To this day, she remains an icon as the Pirate Queen of Ireland. All month, we're talking about folk heroes. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. From iHeart Podcasts, these are the whistleblowers. I wasn't just going to sit silently by. Somebody needs to just give everybody the whole truth. You take your question in black self and get it on up out of my facility. If you speak out, you will pay. He should be prosecuted. When power corrupts, conscience is the last line of defense. I'm Miles Taylor. Listen to the whistleblowers every Thursday on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, this is Laverne Cox. I'm an actress, producer, and host of The Laverne Cox Show. Do you like your tea with lemon or honey? History-making Broadway performer Alex Newell. When I sing, the Holy Ghost shows up. That's my ministry, and I know that well about me. That's the tea, honey. Whoever it is, you can bet we get into it. My guest and I, we go there every single time. I can't help it. Listen to The Laverne Cox Show on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. On How Rude, Tanneritos, the Full House Rewatch podcast. Join characters Stephanie Tanner and Kimmy Gibbler, also known as actresses Jodie Sweetin and Andrea Barber, as they relive every episode of your favorite Friday night comfort show. We spent our entire childhoods on a little show called Full House. Playing frenemies, but becoming besties whenever the cameras weren't rolling. And now, 35 years later, it's our biggest adventure yet. Listen to How Rude Tanneritos on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.